Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Rage Shadow Legends. I am Colred. I hope you're doing well today. In today's video, we are going to talk about our third turn attack tournament this week, and that is the Dragon Turn Attack. This time, the faction is the Knight's Revenant. Now, I'm going to approach this video a little bit differently than my previous two on the Fire Knight and Spider Turn Attack tournaments. In my comments, I've noticed a lot of early game players saying they just don't have a team that they can put together. They can't even get into stage one of these dungeons to start collecting points. So we have about 18 hours to prepare for this tournament. And I'm telling you, that's enough time for you to get a team together so you can collect points in this tournament if that's what you want to do. And that brings us to the second thing we're going to talk about today. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to prepare, invest in a team, and then actually go after these points in these tournaments? Especially if you're like a mid-game player and you have to drop down several stages in the dungeon to be able to farm it. And therefore, the drops that you're getting aren't that valuable to you. So we're going to figure all that out. I hope you're ready for it. Let's get started. OK, so here I am on my level 53 account, and I will show you my daily logins. I am on day 59. Now, you may be a little bit earlier in the game than me, but this is the earliest account that I have. And I believe that if you are 25 to 30 days in or so, you should definitely be able to prepare a team for this Dragon Turn Attack tournament. You can decide if you want to or not, and we will discuss that as well, because actually the preparation and the decision about whether or not it's worth it, those are going to be tied together. OK, so very quickly, I'm going to take you through the method that I've been showing in my previous two videos for how you assemble a team based on if you already have some champions. Now, the first thing you do is you go up to the filter here, you click on include master vault and reserve vault so you can see all of your champions. And then you go down to the faction and you click on the faction you need, in this case, Knight's Revenant. And you can hide that. And all of these champions up here are my Knight's Revenant champions. So you can see I have enough to put together a team. I have at least five plus you know, some extras. Longsword Torx here was a recent fusion champion from the Bamboos Fusion, so many players may have him. He's an excellent rare, by the way. So if you do have him, you can build him out for this tournament. You may want to hold on to a copy for Faction Crypts. He's an excell excellent Faction Crypt rare. In addition, I was able to fuse a Malkith Bloodflock, also from the Bamboos Fusion event. So if you have him, then you've got two potentially very good faction crypt type champions and those champions are going to form the backbone of your dragon attack tournament team but what if you don't have these particular champions what if you don't have a lot of knights revenants in general what can you do well everybody has access to one very good knight revenant rare who could do a lot of work in this tournament for you that champion is this guy executioner now executioner can be farmed from chapter 11 in campaign and he's got a great kit for this particular tournament. His A2 attacks all enemies. It decreases the turn meter of those enemies by 20%. And then it also has a chance of landing a decrease speed. So the turn meter is 100% chance. And then the decrease speed is a 50% chance here if it's unbooked. He also has an A3 that gives an increased defense to him and a counterattack to him. That can be a useful way to increase his survivability and get some extra attacks out there. His A1 is fine. It hits decently hard. It does have a chance of placing a stun. And then he's got a nice aura of increases allied defense in all battles by 17%. He is a defensive based champion. So this is going to make him tankier and make him hit harder as well. You can see he does damage based on both attack and defense. But so the tankier he is, the harder he'll hit. So if you have no Knights Revenant champions, hopefully you have some. But you can go and farm chapter 11 and start trying to get a few executioners. Hold on to any uncommons that you happen to get so that you can flesh out the overall team. But if you can get yourself two executioners, that may be enough by itself to farm the lowest stages of the dungeons. Now, if you are in the early game, you want some copies of executioner anyway, at least one copy, because he is part of the fusion for Relic Keeper, which you will need to do for your Arbiter missions. So get a copy of this guy, run him up to four stars. You can see you need him here at level 40. Ascend him to four stars, gear him out, and he's going to form a very nice backbone for your Faction Crips team and, in fact, for this tournament team. And if you can get an extra copy or two of him, that's great. 
Again, more work in faction crypts, but you can also turn those champions into chickens down the line. Now, here I am in the Knights Revenant Index. I'm going to walk you through just a few of the champions that I think are valuable for this particular tournament. Again, if you don't have the champions that I mentioned, it doesn't mean you can't do the tournament. You just have to look at your roster and see if you can find value in some of the other champions. The good news is for the Dragon's Den, almost any champions work. You want primarily champions that hit hard. You may need a little sustain because you can't turn meter control the dragon, so he may get turns and hit your team. So you may need a little sustain, but the harder you hit, the less sustain you are likely to need. Now, as far as the uncommons are concerned, there are no good uncommons in this faction for this particular fight. So you may want to just collect a few, get them up to level 30 or 40, and that's just gonna provide extra bodies and extra damage. Consider maybe the affinity of the champions that you have so you can find an affinity that matches that you want to bring in as many strong affinity champions as you can so here cultist and ad monitor are both force affinity so if you have other force affinity champions you may want to pick a magic affinity stage so that you do extra damage again remember it is a turn attack tournament so the fewer turns the better so while the first goal is just to be able to complete the dungeon the second goal is to complete it in as few turns as possible, and that means more damage. All right, and looking at the rares, there are actually a ton of rares here that will do very well, but I'm just gonna focus on a few. In addition to Executioner and Torex, I wanna mention Arcanist. Arcanist is one of the few supports in the rare rarity, and she brings a continuous heal for all allies on two turns. She also has an increased attack buff, which is going to help you do a little bit more damage. That's about it. She doesn't bring a lot, but if you happen to have a copy of her, remember she's Force Affinity, so you can pair her with Ad Monitor or some other Force Affinity champions, go up against that Magic Affinity boss, and maybe she'll do a little bit of extra damage for you as well. Not a lot of sustain, but maybe a little bit is all you need. I'm gonna call out Ash Walker here. He is a Void Rare, but maybe you have a copy of him and one of the biggest benefits here is that he is going to bring you an ally speed in all battles by 12%. So the faster you go, the fewer turns the enemy waves take, and that's going to allow you to get the, to the boss more quickly. It's going to give you a better chance of success. He also brings some debuffs. He has a weaken on his A3. It is an AoE. That's going to help you clear out that, those waves. It's also going to help you on the boss by bringing weaken so you can do more damage. His A2 has a stun. Decreases a turn meter of all enemies if this attack is critical. So again, if you need a little bit of extra help with the waves, you could build him with some accuracy. His A1 hits decently hard and resets the cooldown of his A2 if this kills an enemy. So obviously not usable against the boss or this second part of the skill won't reset anything against the boss. But could be helpful against the wave content. Now pretty much all of the rares are usable if you are a new player. So just run them up to 30. If you can get them to 40 before the tournament starts, that's something that you want to consider because you're going to do much better at level 40. That's also really where you want to camp most of these rares for your faction crypts team as well. Okay, now let's take a look at the epics. Now the epics here in the Knights Revenant faction are a bit of a mixed bag, but there are a lot of champions here that can be valuable in this particular tournament. There are too many to call out, so I'm just going to focus on a few for right now. You are likely to need at least a little bit of sustain. A cleanse would be really valuable. And so Doom Priest provides both of those. This is an excellent champion for dungeons in general. The Dragon Boss has a chance to land a weaken, poisons, and a stun on the big attack. So you're going to want a way to handle that. And Doom Priest's passive heals all allies by 7.5% of their HP and removes a random debuff. So it'll be a cleanse of at least one debuff, plus a heal every time she goes. So if you bring her onto your team, build her fast, build her tanky. She needs no accuracy. She needs no resistance, by the way, because her passive removes stuns and it goes off whether or not she's stunned. It doesn't matter. So just build her fast and tanky, really as fast as you can get her. If you can't get her super fast, consider a relentless set because if she goes back to back, that's going to be a nice chunky 15% heal for everybody. This is definitely a champion that's worth taking up to six stars as well. So investing in this champion is going to be a great long-term investment. She's going to help you in this tournament. She's going to help you forever. If you're still looking for some support, there are several champions in this faction who give you heals or shields 
or cleanses or revives. So any of those champions are good. Also increased defense, ally protection, um, and strengthen. Those are all good abilities. So I'm just going to shout out some champions here. Miscreated Monster is great for shields. Rector Draft gives you mitigations with a perfect veil plus heals. She also has a decreased attack, which is going to help you against the boss. Sepulcher Sentinel is a nice tank. And then Skull Crown does a ton of damage and brings a, an AoE weaken as well. Don't forget Whisper, who is an amazing boss killing damage dealer. If you have any of these champions and you haven't built them out yet, you don't necessarily need to build them. Just run them up to 40, get them three star ascended so they have their full kit available. And you should be able to do a lot of work in this tournament with these champions. Again, if you have any other epics, consider those as well. Don't forget that you want to try to get an advantage based on your champion's affinities. So if you can get a number of champions into the same affinity and then go up against a stage where that is the strong affinity, that's going to be your best option for decreasing the turns it takes to beat that dungeon. Okay, so now let's figure out if it's worth it to go ahead and build those teams. And especially if you have to farm executioner or maybe some uncommons, is it worth it to even try and go after this dragon turn attack tournament? So one of the key components to free to play life is basically always trying to get additional return on your investment, right? We call it double dipping, triple dipping. Like the more times you can get a reward for the same energy or for the same gems or for the same silver, then the better off you are. So let's take a, a look at the full process from start to finish. If we are trying to complete a team, say we're going after executioner and some uncommons, what would we have to do in order to do that and then go all the way to the point where we could actually successfully complete the turn attack tournament? And then what would we get in terms of rewards for all of that effort? So let's start with farming some champions. So here we are in campaign. Now, if you already have some Knights Revenant champions, but you need to level them up, the great news is that Hallowed Halls actually has pretty good XP. It is chapter 11, chapter 12 is the maximum chapter. So you're getting 95% or 90% of the XP that you would be getting anyway if you were farming up champions. So by farming up champions here, by leveling them up here, you also increase your chance of getting those uncommon drops and maybe even that rare drop of an executioner or two. So the good news is if you are simply investing in leveling up champions and you need to do so in the hallowed halls, you're not really wasting anything and you're already getting the same return on champion farming that you would normally be getting. You're getting the, it's, let's say you're doing 11-3 here, you're getting the silver from the shields that you're selling, you're getting the XP from your champions, and now potentially the uncommons and rares that drop are going to be faction specific for your tournament team. So this feels pretty good. In addition, there's something going on right now that isn't the turn attack tournament where we would benefit. Right now for the next 16 and a half hours, which is almost the full duration before the dragon tournament drops, there's about an hour and a half difference or so. And every time we go into campaign, all of our drops, all of those shields that we end up selling for silver, that's going to help us in the Dungeon Divers event. So here we can get points to climb along this path. And as you notice, there are Halloween points available here. There's an Ancient Shard, an Epic Skill Tome. If you get far enough, there's an XP Barrel. But so this is already a double dip. In fact, this is probably a triple dip because the double dip is getting the champions that we need as drops in campaign for the tournament team. I'm going to go ahead and collect my gems there. Now, in addition to the Dungeon Divers event, there's something else going on. And that is this Cursed Masquerade path. So this is also going on for 16 more hours. So as you're farming your food up and your champions up and you're getting those drops, you are also getting points for this path right here. You can see that if you upgrade champions, you get points. So let's go ahead and look at that. So champion upgrades level up and rank up champions. So you get level points and you get upgrade points. And these points are decent return. So you can be getting points for the path event. You can get, be getting points for the dungeon divers event. You can be getting the champions that you need for the tournament that's coming up. You can be farming up food and silver just like normal. And you can be doing all of that for the same energy. So that feels like a really good return on investment so far. Now, another thing that's going on is this upgrade artifacts and accessories. You can also get points here because remember those shields that are dropping in 
chapter 11. You can also run those up to four or eight before you sell them, and that's going to allow you to get some points for this path event from the upgrade artifact and accessories chart as well. And then there is one last additional thing that is going on, which is starting on Friday and running for the full duration of this tournament. There are triple drop rates for speed artifacts from the Dragon's Lair. Now, this is a little bit tricky because if you really want the speed artifacts, you may want to be farming this dungeon at the highest potential stage that you can do to get the best drops. So if you are a mid game or late game player and you can farm stage 20 for the tournament, the turn attack tournament, even if it's a little bit less efficient, that may be more worthwhile because that's going to help you get good speed artifacts. But regardless of where you can farm it, getting more speed artifacts is always good. So if you are in the early stage and you're getting three star and four star drops, four star speed gear can last you for quite a while. That can last you into the early mid game, maybe even longer. So you're getting additional benefit here because speed artifacts are the most important artifacts from this dungeon. And then finally, we are actually getting our points here for the Halloween Titan event and moving towards those Sun Wukong souls and also all of the other resources that are rewards here. So not just the souls, but they've got gems, tomes, multi battles, energy, chickens, superior potions, mortal soul coins, core hammers, clarion points, who cares, ancient shard. Brews, you know, so as you move through this Titan event, you are getting a lot of resources as rewards other than just the souls. But since all of us have Sun Wukong or all of us will have Sun Wukong, the souls are the big reward. And as you can see, you only need 300 points to get the two star soul. And I believe that even very early game players who are 20 days or 25 days into the game can potentially collect this two star soul. And that's just going to give, give extra value to your Wukong. And one of your strongest champions is going to get stronger still. So I hope that helps you decide whether or not this event is worth it. I do believe that on early game accounts, when you can triple dip, quadruple dip, quintuple dip, when you can get six times the value uh, in terms of return for your resources, it's always good to try. Now, maybe you're not going to pull it off as effectively as you want. Maybe it's not going to be super efficient in terms of one thing or another. Maybe you're not going to farm the stage that you want for the best gear drops. But when you're getting value in all of these different places, putting time, energy, and maybe gems into trying to go after this tournament seems like a good idea for me, especially for free-to-play players or early game players, because there are only a few places where you're ever going to get this much return on investment. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build a team here on my level 53 account, and I'm going to see what stage I can reasonably farm. Now, obviously, the tournament isn't live yet, so I'm just going to do a little bit of research here. I'm going to build myself a team, see what happens. All right, so here I am in my roster again. I've filtered for the Knights Revenants, and I already have a pretty good faction crypt team here. And so I'm going to just try my faction crypt team. Now that's going to consist of Doom Priest, Sinesha, Thylesia, Malkith Bloodflock, and then Longsword Torex. You can see they are all already built. None of them are super strong. They're mostly in four star gear. Some of that gear is only up to eight, some of it's up to 12. I don't think many people have any level 16 gear. Doesn't look like anybody has level 16 gear. So I could potentially strengthen some of this gear, and I may in fact do that right now because I can also get points for the path event. I think it's the path event. It's either the path event or the Titan event for improving accessories and uh, artifacts. So I can still get yet another opportunity to win resources by doing things that I should already be doing anyway. So I'm going to strengthen up some of these champions. Then we're going to go over to the Dragon's Lair and see what we can do. Okay, so I've taken everybody's gear up to level 12. I've also swapped out a few pieces just to get a little bit more power onto my one major damage dealer, which is Thylesia. So I wanted her to hit a little bit harder. So I've gotten her crit rate up to 66%. Now, none of these champions have masteries, you can see. So this is not something that you have to worry about. But if you were trying to squeeze every last stage out of a team, Maybe you could potentially get the first few tiers of masteries. That's up to you. And again, Torix here is at level 30. So if I leveled him up to level 40, which I may do in advance of the actual tournament, that would give me a little bit more power here as well. Okay, so that is enough with the builds here. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair and actually see what these champions can do. So now I have to determine which stage I want to take on. Now remember, all of my champions are Force Affinity or Spirit Affinity. 
So what I want to do is I want to probably take on either a force affinity boss. Therefore, my spirit affinity champions will be strong affinity and my force affinities will be neutral. Or I could potentially take on a void affinity boss and then everybody would be neutral. I don't want to take on a magic affinity because even though some of my champions would be strong, others would be weak. But I may be able to actually get some value out of a stage like that later on once I've started sort of determined where my maximum efficiency is through experimentation. But so for right now, I want to take on a force affinity stage. So I'm just going to start with stage two. Now, this should be a relatively easy stage for this team. We have all level 40s except for my one level 30. And the damage you can see even for my support champions is more than enough to get me through these waves. No problem. Get to the boss. And remember, this is a turn attack tournament, so the fewer turns, the better. So sometimes it's better to take on a weaker stage just because your return on investment is going to be better. You want to calculate your energy against the points that you're going to get. Now, I don't get points here yet because the tournament isn't live, but you can see that was only 15 turns. And that actually matches my best. That is my best. So pretty good result here. Again, going to be bad drops here at stage two, but I'm going to get some silver for it. And we talked about all the other places I'm getting value for my resources. So if you want to compete in this tournament and all you can do is stage two, that's enough. By the way, you don't need these four epics, right? You'll notice the boss never took a turn, really. The waves never got a turn, really. So you could do this probably with all rares. Most rares at level 30, even if you build them properly and you put them together on a stage where there's strong affinity, you're going to be just fine. OK, so let's take it up a notch and we're going to go up here to stage six and see how we do here. Again, we want to go into force affinity because we're mostly spirit affinity and force affinity champions. And we'll see how we do here. So when the boss rears up and he gets ready to do his special skill, that's what you would need the cleanse for. If that skill goes off, you're going to get stunned. Your team is going to get stunned and poisoned. And that's where, you know, like in this attack as well, we get poisoned and weakened. So this is where my Doom Priest is going to do some work here with the cleanses and the heals. And again, relatively quick, 29 turns, 40 seconds. That's actually my best because I don't come down here to farm. I'm farming up at stage 19 right now. OK, so now the question is, can we get to stage 10? Now, stage 10 could be a really good compromise of a stage to farm during this tournament because of that three time speed drop, right? Stage 10, you get four star gear and five star gear. So if you are a early game player or a mid game player, five star speed gear may be very good. Obviously, you get some four star gear here as well, but you're you no longer get any three star drops. So if you can get to stage 10 or higher, that's going to be great. Remember, at stage 13, you actually start to include those six star drops. So again, that would be another stage to shoot for. Even if you are typically farming up near stage 20, you could do the tournament at these stages and still get valuable drops. And so not miss out on that three times speed event. All right, let's see if we can do stage 10. I'm not really confident here because of that level 30 longsword. If he was at 40, I would be pretty confident here. Also, if I had ascended my epics, I would be a little bit more confident. But I might have a chance of getting through stage 10 here. All right, so I'm going to take myself away here. We're going to watch the fight. This one's going to be a little bit longer is my guess, but it looks good so far. No go with stage 10, but that's OK. I actually think I can farm stage 10 during the tournament. So this run was very informative. This team is close, but there are a couple of things that I think would help. One is I definitely do want Torix up at 40. So I'm going to get him to 40. That shouldn't be too hard to do in the next 16 hours or so. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some gear improvements here. But let's go look at this team back in the roster and you're going to see there are several ways I could improve this team without necessarily taking anybody up to five stars. And I think that's going to allow me to farm stage 10 here to be a really nice farm stage for me for that tournament. All right. So when I'm thinking about improving this team, there are several things that I can do. The first, of course, is that I can ascend some of my champions. 
and make sure that they have the full power of their kits available. That will also give them some stats. As you notice, I got that dragon down fairly far. I only had about a third of its health left. But one of the things that I wasn't able to do was break that purple bar. So if I could get a little bit more damage on this team and break that purple bar, I think the sustain will take care of itself. So a few more stats here will help me hit harder. Also help me take a little bit less damage, and that'll be good. So potentially I will ascend Malkith and Thylesia up to three stars ascension. I will level Longsword Torox up to four stars um, level 40. And then I can start looking at gear. Now, the one thing with gear that I'm going to probably focus on is the boots. A little bit more speed here is going to help. And remember, if I can level their gear right now before that path event ends, I'm going to get points for the path event as well for improving gear. And so I'm going to do all of that in the next 16 hours. That extra speed is going to give me more heals. It's going to give me more turns for more damage. So that's going to help me everywhere. And finally, the last place I could look again, I'm going to go back into that Dragons stage 10 and try it out as I'm progressing and improving my team. But the last place I can look if I really need a little bit of just a little bit of extra help is the Masteries. With just a couple of runs in Minotaur 15, which I can now farm with just two champions. So I can put my two farm champions in there. That's my main champion and probably Deacon Armstrong or Runekeeper Dazdurk. So with just two of those champions, I can now farm up some masteries on all of these other champions. And if I can just get the first couple of tiers, I can potentially get a little bit of extra crit rate and some crit damage. I could get some extra defense and some heals. I could get extra accuracy. So there are all sorts of little bonuses that I could get with just the first two tiers of masteries. So I have a lot of places to get improvements from gear, ascensions, masteries, leveling up to four stars. All of those things can help me. And finally, I didn't mention this, but I could also start putting some one star glyphs on these champions, get maybe five, six extra speed, maybe another few hundred HP or defense. And that might be enough as well, or maybe even attack to get me to break that purple bar and sustain through that boss fight. I'm close. I'm really close. And although I don't currently have any intention of taking these champions up to five stars, that would be the last thing that I could do. I do have the intention of at some point taking Doom Priest all the way up to six stars. So if I wanted to, I could get her to five stars. She's not going to bring a lot of extra damage at five stars, though. So that doesn't seem like a top priority. OK, so tons of ways to still improve my team. I think I'm going to be able to farm that stage 10. Whatever stage you can farm, consider that when you're thinking about the use of your resources and whether or not it's worth it for you to go after this turn attack tournament. But as you can see, a lot of rewards for the resources, that's pretty good. And it's not necessarily something that you have to overextend yourself for. Remember that the team that I build today will be my faction crypts team moving forward. So let's just take a look at my faction crypt and you can see how much advancement I've already made over there with basically this exact team. OK, so as you can see right here, I have 19 stars in the Knights Revenant Crypt. We can't actually look. It just closed. I think it was open yesterday or the day before. And with all of those 40s and that 30, I was able to get through the first boss just fine. I think I am farming stage nine or something like that. So with this team, I should be able to get all the way to the second boss. And I'll probably start farming right around whatever that is, stage 11 or 12. I guess it would be 13. The boss is at 14. So if I could farm stage 13, that would be great because that is actually a stage where you can start to get some really good forge materials as drops. So remember, you just need level 40s. That's all you need. Even level 30s can do the job if they're built right and they're in a good team. OK, so that is it. I hope I've given you food for thought and given you enough information to make a good decision for yourself about whether or not you want to try this dragon turn attack tournament and if you haven't been able to go after that fire knight or that spider tournament this one is probably a little bit easier for most players and again don't forget that executioner that is a free really good rare from campaign that can become the backbone of not only the team for the dragon turn attack tournament but the backbone of your faction crypts team for at least the foreseeable future until you need to fuse him or until you just need to turn him into a chicken because you've gotten better champions 
Please let me know in the comments below if this has changed your mind about this event or if it's convinced you that you can put together an effective team. If you have any questions at all, please let me know those as well. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and consider joining our Discord community. Thanks so much for hanging out. I've been Colred, and I will see you in another video soon.